Coming up today on Locked On Texas Tech, we'll get you set for Red Raider hoops as they're back in action from United Supermarkets Arena. Is Daniel Bacho going to be on the floor? His coach said 50-50. We'll get some of the latest thoughts from Chris Level on Bacho's availability coming up tonight. We'll also get to the gridiron and talk about an impactful player deciding to make it one more round in West Texas in 2023 on the defensive side of things for Tech. But first, directly ahead, swinging our sword. We're talking the Pirate of the Plains. Next on Locked On Texas Tech. You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Everything runs through love. Appreciate you joining us once again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team Every day with the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. In today's episode of Locked on Texas Tech, brought to you by Sling TV. Sling has got something for everyone with a massive lineup of games across the ACC, Big Ten, Pac-12, SEC, and beyond. You can always catch the games you want on Sling. Check out Sling TV now to see the massive lineup of games they'll have throughout the year. With Sling, the TV you love for a price you'll love, try it today. Chris, we uh, kick off today's episode not in a way that uh, anyone would want to, but here to uh, spend some time for just a moment in the land of the pirate because it's obviously on the minds of all Texas Tech fans, and that is who we uh, communicate with each weekday here on Locked On Texas Tech, your all-time football wins leader and maybe the most endearing that you've had certainly since Spike Dykes left campus as far as head coaches is in a fight for his life as we are having this conversation, obviously in a podcast form, depending upon when you're listening to this, who knows what the news may be for better or worse. So we're keeping both of those doors open and obviously hoping for the best for Coach Leach. But uh, things turned very, very serious, obviously, to kick off the week. And man, unfortunately, I haven't really seen anything uh, that suggests it has gotten any less so uh, as far as that goes from Mississippi. Yeah, Cowan, I, I think it's uh, as, as people are aware, aware now, it's it's pretty uh, dire. Um, and again, we don't know uh, when, when you're actually seeing this and if things will change between now and, and when people see this. But um, the, the guy is responsible for so many uh, great memories uh, that I and so many others have of Texas Tech football. I think he gave you an identity. Uh, I think that, you know, his coaching tree, I mean, is well documented. I think that he, you know, changed the game of football, the way it's played in the Big 12 at the high school level in the state of Texas. I think you see some different things in the NFL. And he was one of the most unique people that you'd ever spend time around. It's just surreal to me that uh, if, 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 if this is as bad as you kind of are led to believe that I just felt like I was watching him on Thanksgiving night coaching the Egg Bowl and uh, so yeah. spent some time around him in Memphis uh, uh, about a year ago with uh, the bowl game, and he hadn't changed a bit. Um, I know plenty of people that uh, are on that. Uh, staff now and that uh, w- were on his staff at, or was were on his staff at Mississippi State and were at Washington State and all those things and yeah it's just uh, it, it it's tough man he's 61 it's just uh, it's not not like this you know I just didn't I just uh, I, I hope that things change I hope that uh, it, it's just yeah hard to process uh, because he was just such a so good for the sport. And I think while, you know, many maybe didn't agree with certain things, whatever, uh, you, you can't, you can't deny his fingerprints all over the sport and how beloved he was by so many people and how unique he was because there was never a dull moment around Mike and, you know, I hosted his coaches show and spent so much time around him. And so many people did so many people have got great stories and I just, uh, I just think back to a lot of those uh, great memories uh, that he provided to people like you and I, man. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of uh, like Bill Murray factor with Mike Leach whenever it comes to like anybody that he just ran into 
probably has a great story on the other side of it that, that others may not believe, but it's like one time I was at this seven 11 and here's a guy rollerblading <laughs> up to the door and it's Mike Leach. That's just a hypothetical. Didn't really happen to me, but you might think it would. Cause it sounds like something <laughs> that somebody might encounter when it comes to Mike Leach. And I love all the football stuff. Great. Certainly it was a lot of fun as a Texas tech fan whenever he was uh, here in Lubbock, Chris, but I'm one, I'm one of those that just appreciates, I think, above and beyond everything else, characters. Uh, and certainly yeah. character is nice in a man as well. But characters, when you're talking about sports or whatever it may be, we're there to be entertained at the end of the day. And I loved how Mike Leach, and it's funny to me, you just said this, um, was the kind of guy that that – you wouldn't expect to have changed, I guess, if you didn't see him for a decade. <laughs> you would expect that he was going to be uh, the same dude that, that you knew at one point uh, years prior. And there are far too few of those type of people, uh, not only in sports, but it seems like just uh, in the general population these days. And, you know, he, he's an easy guy, I think, to feel fondly about from a personality standpoint, like all men on planet Earth. Uh, he was flawed and he was admirable all in the same ball. And uh, I think that is absolutely nothing unique. That is what we all are. So I know not everyone has the same opinion uh, of Mike Leach or anybody else that we'd probably throw up for discussion. But Chris, I think we've seen far and wide uh, from a tech fan standpoint, the relationship that maybe as a tech fan, you didn't even know was there. And, you know, I'm kind of struck this week just myself with uh, my reaction to the news and what I felt like could be eventually, obviously, a worst case scenario. And um, I, I'd never met Mike Leach. I didn't know him personally. You had a relationship with him working and beyond, I'm sure. Uh, I, I did not. I got to cover him for one year before he left Lubbock back in 2009. Uh, my entry into talk radio, his exit from Texas Tech, coincidence or otherwise, that, that's part of the mystery. I'm not going to take that blame right now, but. Uh, Chris, I, I think you just have to understand that whenever you have followed a guy in so many situations, uh, there's going to be a sentimentality there that, that maybe you didn't actually know was there. And I'm, I'm kind of just talking to myself right now. I'm not sure that I knew uh, I'd have this kind of reaction when you were faced with potentially this kind of sad news. Yeah, it's... It, um... It just, yeah, it, it hits hard um, and, and without knowing, you know, uh, wh where this goes and, and how I don't exactly know what, what the issues are. I just have talked to enough people to where you just realize that it, it's, it's very, very serious. And um, I just I just immediately was thinking back to some of the 2 a.m. phone calls that I would get, um, you know, just the the random conversations that that I would be in the middle of, and again, so many others uh, in, involved in these things as well. But, um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, and I, I immediately thought back to sitting in the hotel lobby uh, with with him after a, a press conference uh, last year in Memphis, and uh, he and he and Sonny. Uh, Cumby talked a bit, and uh, and then and then Mike came over and, and talked to John Harris and I and Brian Jensen, and you know we just we kind of caught up a little bit, and he's just sitting there with a cup of coffee, and as he always did, and and uh, you know I just yeah, and I'm just sitting there thinking like I just I just watched ESPN the night of Thanksgiving, and he's coaching against you know wh who you're about to face in a bowl game, and it just seems like just. Yeah, surreal. Uh, but because uh, I mean, it, you know, and, and I and I think it's worth mentioning, he's really good at what he did. Uh, because you you take programs like Tech and Washington State and Mississippi State, and you start taking them to bowl games on a regular basis. You kind of get them turned around and give them identities and make them competitive and and some tough leagues, uh, three power five leagues. And I just uh, I just I just think we all saw how much he just changed the sport. And you're right, it's it's we're talking football here. And I think that gets glossed over because everybody talks about, you know, the 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 funny uh, quotes, uh, the rants, <laughs> the the you know, just his opinions on whatever, and uh, you know, and and here everybody's you know praying for the pirate, and it's like the fact of that right there, and that he had this whole, you know, just just other like I don't nickname or whatever. It just that just kind of tells you. 
who who the guy uh, is and was and and all those things. And it's just uh, it's just a lot, man. It's it's hard to process it all. But I uh, you know I I, I thought you know uh, I just didn't think we would be talking about something like this at 61 years old. I just didn't. So, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we get uh, we get some good news. Uh, but man, he he, uh, and, and I think you're seeing it, Cowan. I think you're seeing how much you know, like the conversation we're having here, how much this fan base appreciated for what he did. And you can have an opinion on how it ended and whose fault it was and all that stuff. And I'm sure there's plenty of blame to go around there. I'm not getting into all that. I don't, I gives me tired head. I just remember, uh, I just remember seeing him last year and he was just like, Hey, what's up fellas. I mean, you know, I mean, he's just like, <laughs> you know, and, and I, and I appreciated that. Um, he probably will never know how much I just, uh, appreciated just kind of, uh, you know, getting to see him after some time away. And again, the profession's a strange profession. Uh, people bounce around and uh, they, they, they coach at different places and all that stuff. And unfortunately I've, I've dealt with way too much of that at, at times when you get close to people and they're, they're gone for whatever reason it is, but uh, man, it's just, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I hope we get some good news there, man. Well, we're going to keep hope alive, uh, regardless yeah. of what any of the news turns out to be. Uh, we're going to keep hope alive, and certainly keeping Coach Leach and uh, his family uh, in our thoughts and, and in our prayers as we continue to uh, pray for a miracle. And uh, we'll see what is coming up uh, on the other side. But uh, the experiences, one way or another, uh, that you had as a Tech fan or whatever you might be, if you're listening to this conversation and have any affinity for Mike Leach. Uh, something obviously that is not going to go away. Uh, yeah, so- well, and, and Casey, you know, I, I think what hits home is that you have the head coach at USC, you have the head coach at the University of Houston, you have the head coach at TCU, you have, uh, you know, kind of a, a special assistant to the head coach at NC State and Ruffin McNeil. I mean, you just don't realize how many people uh, were, were – around him and and a part of this whole machine and when you see them expressing concern it, it and, and 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 very important people in in our sport and the sport of college football it just kind of hits you hard on on the magnitude of the figure that he was and how many people he worked with you know and and that's yeah. a, we'll, we'll we'll save some of those conversations for another time but i just thought that's what that was kind of in my face when I see Lincoln and, and Sonny and Dana and all those guys that I spend so much time around and that so many other people uh, did too, that then you look at what, what they're doing now. I mean, those, those guys were all here together, man. And it just, uh, uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just tough. Yeah. And regardless of the outcome, uh, gives us all perspective. I hate perspective yeah. because I only get it in moments like this. I don't know why I never choose to gain any, in a regular sunny day kind of moment, but it's only moments like this. It seems like uh, when you gain that perspective, uh, life is fleeting. Christ is the only refuge. And uh, it's times like this when maybe that should be something to consider. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll obviously see. keep a close eye uh, on the state of Mississippi and what's going on with Coach Leach. We will keep it within the world of football what a stretch for a segue, but I'm trying my best. Uh, coming up dead ahead as we're going to return to Lubbock and actually talk some good news for the Red Raiders. We've been alluding to this uh, for the past few days, past seven days or so, and we saw something really great for Texas Tech defensively come to fruition. We will get to Malik Dunlap coming up next on Locked on Texas Tech. But first, today's episode brought to you by our friends at Omaha Steaks. Hold on to your butts because this is insane in the steak membrane. Omaha Steaks has cut prices 50% site-wide to make you the gift-giving hero you always wanted to be. The holidays are here and achieving gifting greatness when you give the gift to perfectly aged, tender, and delicious Omaha Steaks is easy to do at Omaha Steaks. Dot com. I had a loved one gift me a steak just last week, Chris, and mm, succulent, delicious. I love them for their thought, but it wasn't an Omaha steak, so I didn't love them quite as much as maybe I could. And here's a little hint if they're listening to the episode, if they were hooking me up at OmahaSteaks.com. 
Com. A delicious selection put together of various gift packages to make shopping for the ones you love nice and easy. So head there now to omahasteaks.com and take advantage of 50% off. That's half for our friends in Bryan College Station. Plus, use the code Locked On L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout to get an additional 40 bucks off your order. 40 bucks off your order. Should I repeat it? 50% off site-wide at omahasteaks.com and then hit them with the promo code Locked on at checkout to get an additional 40 bucks off. You may feel a little guilty, so maybe wear a ski mask while you're punching all this into the computer. Don't wait. Order today and beat the shipping rush. Go to omahasteaks.com and use our promo code locked on at checkout. That is promo code locked on at checkout to get that extra 40 bucks off your order on top of the already 50% off site wide minimum order may be required at omahasteaks.com thanks for joining us on locked on texas tech on the locked on podcast network where it's your team every day with chris level i'm casey cowan coming at you west of the 100th meridian where it's really going down and uh chris we actually have a bit of good news to touch on here once again a little bit of a roll i feel like i'm on as a texas tech football fan we talked about the beef being back last week with two defensive tackles in the form of jalen hutchings and tony bradford uh who chose to remain in lubbock for a final go round and i know at least as far as i'm concerned man my eyes have gone directly to two bookends in the secondary we've been talking about Two cornerbacks in Rayshon Williams and Malik Dunlap. You've expressed some optimism, kind of surprisingly to me, because I I didn't expect it necessarily to go this way, but about the chances of them remaining on campus in Lubbock at the time that we're having this conversation have not seen anything as far as a final decision from Rayshon Williams. But Malik Dunlap maybe does it better than anybody's done it so far with his Twitter announcement. He is remaining in Lubbock, and he uses the luscious Leo DiCaprio to say, I'm not fucking leaving. And I thought, (laughs) my God, is going to have Red Raider Nation stirred up, man, in the middle of a three-week bowl layoff. So the announcement was fire. But the actual result of the announcement, Chris, triple fire, man. I mean, I am getting really excited about the chances you're going to have to have a really good defense next year. Yeah, you know, and, and he's the one that I was maybe more or most worried about. I think he got the highest draft grade. I think he's the oldest uh, player, as we kind of touched on some of those things. I think the Matador Club certainly plays a factor here in into in some of these things and NIL and all those. But, um, yeah, th- this is a bona fide starter in the Big 12. I, mean, I think you're talking, uh, you know, preseason – you know, first, second team recognition uh, cornerback for uh, Malik Dunlap. You know, he's he's somebody that I think at last check had started about 21 games, uh, has played in about 41. Uh, you know, and I, I just – I go back to like that guy. I know he was fired up for it, but I go back to that uh, that game that he played at NC State where he was just yeah. a man. Um, they kept, you know, targeting, targeting, targeting him, and he just – it was it was deflection after deflection. I just thought, but yeah, he he he's just a really good football player. I think he's uh, he's figured it out. Uh, I think he, again, he's long, he's old. Uh, from a college standpoint, he, he can run and he fit in with what Coach DeRuder was really wanting to do this year. I think he plays the run pretty well. Uh, so I yeah I I am hope. I mean, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but when you know that you have these D tackles and corners and now that you're sitting here, if you'd have told me two weeks ago, you're going to get three of the four of them back. And that's all I can promise you, you know, you, you, you take it and run. And that's yes. where you're at right now with the, with a pretty good chance to get all four back. Uh, we'll see what Rashad does, but yeah, this was, and, and on a, uh, on a very newsy kind of day, it just kind of got uh, buried in, into, uh, into into a lot going on out there in the sports world and in Lubbock and uh, elsewhere, but uh, but yeah, this was the, for for Joey and and Coach DeRuder specifically. This is a really big deal, man. He's a 
he can help you uh, a lot. And it, uh, and it allows you to kind of bring whatever race shot does. It now allows you to bring your, your other corners or some of those depth pieces and continue to grow them up before you, you, you put it on them and say, Hey, it's your turn. We need you to grow up right now. So, uh, yeah, this was a big deal. So now all eyes are on Ray shot Williams. I, I'm sitting here now kind of, I, I start to, to count up. All right. Well, who are the guys I really wanted back the most that had these decisions to make guys that you and I talked about, uh, on our eligibility radar episode yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong, but I almost feel like you're, you're checking off the top three on your list, three of the top four, three of the top five. I, I don't know, but these guys are all pretty high up on, hey, man, it'd be great if we could get these back and right out of the gates. Boom, boom, boom. You got Boy, three that would be so far. That would be really hard to rank uh, that group. Well, you touch on something that's fairly – I don't know. You know, when you factor in Trey Wolf and, you, you know, yeah. you start talking Sir Roderick uh, and all of his career touchdowns, uh, and then you, you think factor about in corners behind and D, these guys, like and D, yeah, D tackles. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, there, there's so much great, great point, so much factors in there. Um, but I'm glad I don't have to find out what you have depth wise at corner as much and at D tackle as much now. Uh, but, <laughs> um, you know, and, and again, Coach McGuire mentioned that about all the he had what I think he said seven returning starters at, at when he met with the media after the bowl announcement and he was counting, you know, the D tackles and the corners in that, you know, like guys that can come back and all that. And right now you, you, you for sure have six starters uh, that, that are returning. And if Rayshad comes back, that, that would be number seven. So yeah, man, it, uh, it, it welcomed, uh, welcome to welcome to new. Sure. I mean, and, and, and again, I think you see, you know, with continuity, with continuity uh, with a coordinator too, I just think that they have a chance to be even better, and they still what? achieve their dreams. What know? is that? <laughs> what continuity with a court a DC? <laughs> you yeah. explain that to me after the show, Chris. Because <laughs> uh, you're so on the money there, yeah. Be, because Keith Patterson, I mean, you know, and again, different schemes and all that, but I think when you you saw that group really start to improve when they're in year two and year three and all those things. And, you know, that he, he deserves some credit for the group that that's here, but I think Tim DeRuiter's kind of taken it and ran with it. And yeah, I mean, I just, I think that the, not now with a full off season and, and all that, but yeah, I mean, this is, this was good, good stuff, man. Sign me up for more. Man, you're going to be an old seasoned, hardened defense <laughs> right. in some of the most particular spots. I mean, some of these guys, Tech's going to have to start matching their 401k if they hang around much longer. I mean, these are grown men. <laughs> We're talking about some of these situations, but I'm just, I'm just basking in the glow of what you said uh, to begin this conversation, talking about DTs and cornerbacks. Yeah. Oh, just DTs and cornerbacks, I guess. Just a couple of throwaway positions where you can find guys any old day, right, to come. Uh, flirt with playing at an all-conference level i mean that, that's hard, really great news hard to find especially six three corners you know I mean, those, those right. are yeah those are those are rare well uh yeah i was just gonna say i remember that first game i think their first game was against houston uh in houston um when you had kind of this new collection of dbs and you're seeing all off season on the roster like oh six three six four six two six whatever I'm like, okay, this is looking pretty good. And then you see them physically, and I'm like, wow. I don't remember a collection physically like what you have had over the last couple of years. And I'm thinking, I remember at that time, Chris, like, man, I just wish we could have these guys a little longer. And it sounds like uh, with some of them at least, we're going to squeeze every bit of time that is possible, thankfully, by virtue of their own decision-making. And you know what? Thankfully also uh, to this era we are in where name, image, and likeness rights can impact these things. I got no beef with it. And of course, uh, you'll have to trust me that I would say the same if it wasn't leading to good news for my particular rooting interest, but it is right now. So I definitely have got no beef with it, man. So congratulations to uh, Malik Dunlap on a big decision that will be well-received, uh, obviously in West Texas. And I'm just thinking right now of Dave Chappelle as Rick James, Rashad <laughs> Williams, if you're looking into the camera, <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Let's do it one more again. One more again. It's last call in West Texas. We'll give you another round. Can't wait to find out.
Have I ever told you? Uh, I haven't. Uh, you're going to go, no, I've never heard this. I, I, have I ever told you the story about me seeing Dave Chappelle in the late 90s at a tiny comedy club in downtown Manhattan, New York? I haven't heard with, it, but I assumed you did at one point, of course. Well, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. I mean, he had already done some movies. He, he was, but he, he wasn't anything near what, what right. he is years and years later. This may have been in like 1999. And he, it, you know, the stories of uh, of the comedians that they're just like, okay, we're, they're not on that night, but they're just kind of hanging around and they're just going to yeah. try out material. I happened to be in a comedy club and uh, with my wife and another couple that we were on a trip with. And I think it was 99 and he shows up and he's just hanging out at the bar. There's probably 50 people in this thing. <laughs> and he sits up there and it's like, he just starts just kind of talking to everybody. And I'm like, and then, and he would blow up years later with the show and all that. And I was like, unbelievable. Like, you know, you, you, you see somebody way back before when, and I was like, the guy was just, he's a flat out genius, man. Um, and he, and somebody made the mistake of trying to heckle him. Yeah. And, uh, and I felt sorry for, for this individual after he was done with him with it, when, after, when he had a microphone, in his hand. it was, yeah, but, but Chappelle, man, he, he's, uh, he's the goat man for sure. Oh yeah. And I saw what he did to the nutty professor, uh, heckling wise <laughs> in that movie. So uh, you gotta be a maniac to come at Dave Chappelle on the stage. There's no doubt about that, yes. man. I just wish. Oh, I'm very envious now of your your celebrity uh, connection. Well, I'm trying to think of anything I could come up with. My grandpa. No, it was just saw, it was uh, completely random. Yeah, completely uh, random. I got nothing other than my grandfather told me he saw <laughs> Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis on the train platform one time at the Littlefield Depot. How about that? Did I ever fact check it? No, there's no way to. But I, my grandfather wasn't a liar, so I'm assuming he's telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and I did tell him that day, like, dude. I mean, this is after I've known him for 20 years already. Like. You weren't going to tell me that? What if you just kicked the bucket tomorrow? You weren't going to tell me that Dino has been in the LFD? I mean, of course he was. You noticed a little bit of that LFD swag. I think anytime Dino was on the camera, people were thinking, Lamb County, Texas, for sure, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. If we could uh, connect again at another time in this show, Dean Martin, Dave Chappelle, and Rayshad Williams, we would but it was like a shooting star. You had to capture it right when it was there. So if you were here for that portion, bless you. You are a fortunate individual today. We are not done yet. However, we're back to wrap it up. Coming up next with what else? The round ball. There is a basketball game on the way that we're getting set for. And some interesting news regarding a Texas Tech big man. Not that one. From Mark Adams and Texas Tech as they get ready for Eastern Washington. We will uh, get to that coming up next on Locked On Texas Tech. But first, today's episode brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Find out all the latest on this week's slate of games, whether it's football, basketball, or beyond combat sports, golf, esports. Bet Online has got you covered. The headquarters for live betting stats and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite events. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about what the trends are looking like this week with Bet Online, where the game starts. You got it. It's Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Subscribe on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. With Chris, I'm Casey. Mark Adams and the Red Raiders are back on the floor from United Supermarkets Arena, Eastern Washington, fitting the description of the next potential victim. I uh, want to get into the matchup a little bit, Chris, but I wanted to ask you also about uh, the mention from Coach Adams that uh, Daniel Bacho, I think he said 50-50 as far as maybe yeah. being on the floor. And I think he related it back to an ankle issue against Nichols, which I did not notice. So I've just been sleeping on this entirely. But what's some context around Bacho right now? Yeah, I was at the, you know, obviously you were without Jalen Tyson in the last game versus Nichols. And I think uh, Bacho kind of got dinged up at the very end of the the game and uh, just to uh, – just an ankle issue, sprained ankle, I guess. And 
I don't know if uh, we see him uh, tonight versus Eastern Washington or not. I mean, uh, you know, if you're asking my opinion, I, I guess I would say I doubt it, but I, I have no way of of knowing for sure. Um, and and when what's tricky is you, you know, we, we've we've had these gaps in the schedule, but you you play you know you play tonight, then you're going to turn right around and you you play Saturday, and so this is kind of what a normal Big Twelve week would look like. But when you're kind of dinged up, it's just it's hard to get practice time in. It's hard to uh, and all those things. So I'm guessing he hasn't practiced a ton in the last week. Uh, but uh, we'll see what we get. But yeah, you could in theory, you know, take the floor tonight and and you know sub one of your starters in and then take another one out. From the standpoint of uh, your your normal starting five, Jalen Tyson could be back and Bacho could be out. So we'll just kind of see what it, which is. You know, and, and, and in some ways, it's good for guys like Robert Jennings and K.J. Allen. If that's the way it plays out, they're going to get a lot more minutes, uh, and that's certainly not a bad thing, uh, you know, just because you're running out of opportunities where you can really get some of these guys' uh, minutes, you know, be- before Big 12 play starts. So, we'll, but again, we know what Bacho can do for you, and so if you don't have him tonight, if he, if he and, and even if he plays – at what level is he? You know, what percentage uh, is he tonight? You know, that's also worth. And is it worth putting him if if he's you know has a chance to re-injure or he's not at a hundred? I mean, you know, you you have to consider uh, that as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like when it rains, it pours kind of thing, huh? I mean, I almost want to tap the brake and say, no, it's not worth it to yeah. put him out there. And I don't even know Eastern Washington's record, but I know what you just did against Nichols. So I'm like, well, can you really slough off? You know, anything and say, ah, we don't need him tonight. I, I don't know. That's kind of an interesting decision just given what you just came off of as far yeah. as the experience. But that's probably not going to overwhelm the decision for the coaching staff. Well, on, on paper, and this is what's extremely tricky about this uh, because I just don't know if this tech team is good enough yet just to show up and yeah. overwhelm anybody as they're trying to figure a lot out. And then obviously you're, you're, you're compromised because of injuries and things like that. But – uh, they're, they're not on paper near as good as what Nichols, uh, w- you know, should be, uh, or, or was, or whatever. I mean, they're four and six, uh, they don't do much particularly well, uh, but it is a team that was in the NCAA tournament two years ago, and that's you know, then the portal became a thing, and and then you're you start losing everybody, and so they've got some returners. You know, this is a team that actually played. Uh, in your building last year on December the 22nd, I believe. And I think it was about a 30-point win for the Red Raiders. Uh, But, again, that was last year's team. It was also last year's Eastern Washington team. So uh, we'll see. Because to to me, tonight, I expect Jalen Tyson to play. I think Coach Adams has kind of indicated that. And so it's about getting him back in the flow of things. But then then I want to see if uh, Lamar Washington can kind of build on what he did. Uh, versus Nichols when he got to the free throw line a bunch he rebounded for you you know because him and Davion Harmon are really the only two guys that that have been playing regular minutes that have a much better assist number than they do a turnover number so they are sharing the ball they're putting teammates in positions to score they're they're not they're taking care of it and so I'd like to see if we can build off of some of that and then if you can get some offense out of him by get to the free throw line or whatever. But again, the hardest part at this level for, for players is how do I do this all the time? You know, you don't want to just see the one game and we, we talk about, oh man, remember that Nichols game? You know, we're talking about that six weeks from now and going, you know, and then he hasn't done it since. So the hard part is like, you've got to try to now, can you be somewhat consistent with some of those uh, uh, numbers and, and, you know, productive minutes. And so we'll, we'll, we'll see starting tonight, I guess. Uh, hoping that you're going to be coming up with something that will give you a chance to feel a little bit better at the end of the night, assuming that you can get a win, which maybe I shouldn't assume. But uh, I know it probably left a sick in their mouth uh, last time around to have it like it was against Nichols. I'm sure it was a really fun uh, week of preparation, uh, come to Jesus meetings with the coaching staff (laughs) and beyond. But we've been talking about it all along so far this season, man. Mark Adams and his staff have got to strike that balance of coaching them really hard and encouraging them really hard because you've got some young, talented guys. And obviously, whether they're young or not, you've got a team that is early on in its uh, melding process. So 
uh, you've got to find that balance. That's that's why they're paid the big bucks uh, to find that balance, and and hopefully they can. And uh, we'll begin to find out uh, maybe what they've come up with in about a week's time against Eastern Washington. And yeah, you're right, man. You finally get back to a schedule that will feel somewhat uh, a little more normal to what you're going to see for the remainder of the season. And it comes at a time where two of your primary contributors are, are hobbled in Tyson and Bachos. That's just the way the uh, dice roll, I guess. I mean, better to better to have that now than like a you know a month from now when it, it would true. be you know because I just think as we're seeing this team, you, there, there's just certain guys that you know you you just you can't you can't not have and expect to to you know be competitive against good teams. And I don't I don't know whether Nichols is going to end up being a good team or not. They were in the NIT last year. Uh, I think they're you know. Pr- predicted to win the Southland conference again, uh, this year. Uh, but you know, you, you were missing a key piece there and it, it was almost enough to get you. And there was other things that factored in, but you know, Bacho not being around if, if he misses any time at all, or, or even if he's less than what you were getting, which I mean, I would say, okay, if he does play, he's obviously, you know, not, not what, what we had seen, you know, you miss rim protection, you miss rebounding, you miss scoring, you miss energy, you miss post minutes. And there's just a lot that he was giving you. And that that's uh yeah, that's, that's a concern. But again, luckily it's not mid January when you're, you know, sitting there. Okay. We got to go to Manhattan and, and Waco this week or something. Cause uh, those are, you know, all those games in the big 12, man, are just going to be absolute uh, dog fights, man. And so, We'll, we'll see, man. We'll see what we get tonight. But hopefully you're right. They bounce back and play a little bit better. That's what they need. They need to have a good taste in their mouth and play yeah. well and 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 kind of feel good about doing it. Uh, feel good I, night. You took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. We need a feel yeah. good night. They're, they're kind of gasping for air a little bit. And it, yeah. it's hard, you know. And, you know, maybe you can, you know, by playing well, you instill a little bit of confidence in them. And then maybe they can take a next step with that but right now it's just been a grind lately and because the sport's hard and then you've got some injuries and youth and all that working against you so i don't know maybe we'll get that tonight hopefully we'll, we'll keep my, our fingers crossed there that you do you get it uh i know you're gonna be behind the mic are you gonna be behind the camera as well or which call you on tonight I am doing uh i'm doing tv uh and i'm, I'm i have the unique uh my man john harris is uh, in orlando this week so uh, I'm actually going to be the, the only TV person actually on site. Chris Sylvester, uh, I've worked with oh, him before. Really? He's going to be, uh, yeah, he's going to be elsewhere. And so, yeah, he, he will be remote, uh, but I'll be on site in my normal seat and all that. So, yeah, it ought to be, I'm a little <laughs> nervous about it uh, tonight. Uh, it's going to be weird. And so if, if there's any screw ups, that'll be why I'll take the blame for it now. No, it'll be great. I love having you uh, spicing up the TV broadcast. I do like a heads up, though, so I can adjust the parental controls because when you're on TV, it goes to TVMA for sexuality, and it blocks it from my damn guide. So i got to get a heads up on that, get an early start. I almost got oh, a yeah. spit take from you right there. <laughs> you did. One. Almost said iced tea all over my computer screen. <laughs> on right there. All right. I'm glad we could end it with a laugh, and uh, appreciate you guys for hanging with us. Once again, I'm locked on Texas Tech. Catch uh, Chris on the television broadcast for Red Raiders and Eastern Washington. We'll get set for the next one, which I believe is Jackson State, correct? Coming up this weekend. Yes, in Houston. Yeah. Uh, tip in off. In Houston, uh, yeah. I keep forgetting that. Yeah, 245 on Saturday in Houston at some building that I'm not. It's like a field house somewhere in Houston. I'm not sure where. But Wait, is uh, this yeah. like a Las Vegas women's invitational setup? Or what I, I, am, I, I will report back. I have no idea what to expect <laughs> uh, on, on this road trip. But, uh, yeah, I'll uh, I'll be sure to let, let you know when I see it. I'll, if there are any retired... If there are any retirees eating a continental breakfast right beside the court, please <laughs> let us know. I'd love to check this out. All right, but first, it's Eastern Washington coming up. Uh, Chris, appreciate the insights, man. And uh, I know not all the subjects uh, have been fun to tackle here today, but we're here to speak to and, and as Red Raiders, and I think we're all uh, we're all yeah. thinking the same thing. So I'm glad we could spend some time doing it. Well, and I, I appreciate you uh, too. And it's fun to do these with you and talk about. Uh, whether it's fun or happy or sad or tough or whatever, man, we'll, we'll get through it together, man. But we're all on the same team on this stuff.
Yeah, and we're keeping yeah. hope alive. I said yes, that either scenario. Yeah, that's right. Keep hope alive, man, everybody. Hope and has got to remain. That's right. Uh, yes. One way or another. All right, thanks for joining us on Locked on Texas Tech. Please make Locked on Sports today your second listen, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or anywhere you get podcasts and subscribe on YouTube to Locked on Texas Tech if you have not so far, so you never miss an episode. For the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. We'll see you on the other side right back here on Locked on Texas Tech.